We've been getting a lot of questions and comments about recommendations for homeowners and DIYers about our preference for a good motor saw. And a lot of times I will recommend my favorite seven and a quarter double bevel sliding motor saw. But a lot of you have said, hey Vince, we need something for a little bit more capacity. So today we have a very promising offer in the 10 inch flavor. And it's gonna get unboxed, set up, and we're gonna look it over right after this message from our sponsor, BCG Construction. Head on over to the merch store where you can get hats, hoodies, t-shirts, tech shirts. The link will be down below. So here it is. Skill has a dual bevel sliding motor saw offering. From what I understand, this is a lightweight variant and it's in the 10 inch flavor. I don't mind a 12 inch double bevel motor saw, but I will tell you, a lot of the old timers that I grew up around, they didn't like 12 inch motor saws, they liked a 10 inch motor saw. And they used to tell me it's because the 10 inch blade was stiffer. There would be less chatter and blade deflection through the material. Now here's the thing, back then, were the tools not powerful enough to spin that 12 inch blade? Have we come through an, a new, into a new era? Is there no reason for a 10 inch motor saw nowadays? I mean, I don't know. But I will tell you, the best of the best that I knew, because they're so long ago, some of them aren't around anymore, they liked a 10 inch motor saw. I will tell you, if you had double bevel and a compound and a slider back then, you were to, let me tell you, the bee's knees. Skill is giving you an LED shadow line with this saw. You, this is dual bevel. I'd like to see how they accomplish their bevel and are there any positive stops. We have sliding rails. I guess you do if you have a sliding motor saw. You'll see that it is a 15 amp, 10 inch saw. They're giving you a three year warranty. This is product number MS6305-00. The powerful 15 amp motor delivers 4,800 RPM for quick detailed cuts. The slide rail system provides linear bearings that allow for smooth and accurate operation to cut. It's got increased capacity, cross cuts material up to two by 12 at 90 degrees and two by eight at 45 degrees. It's got a horizontal grip handle, which I, I'm, I'm used to, so I like it. It's got an LED shadow line. I like to see how that works out. Dual bevel cuts in the range of three positive stops at 48 left, zero and 45 degrees right. Cuts at common angles. So cuts at 50 degrees left and right with nine positive stops at most used angles. Arbor size is 5 8 Voltage is 120 volts. Amps is 15 and cord length is six feet. Here's the thing. If you're buying your first motor saw or table saw, in my opinion, it should probably be corded. Especially as a DIYer or a homeowner, when you pull out your saw, when you finally get around to doing your project, all you need to do is find an outlet and an extension cord. There's a lot going on here. We have a material clamp, got some candles here. We got a dust bag. Looks nice. I will tell you right now, it's lightweight. I mean, it looks, it looks well machined. Slide our fence in here. It's heavily greased as well. We have our sawdust bag. Let's install that. Here's our material clamp. Let's put that off to the side for now. Here's the thing. This saw has numerous positive stops, okay? 15 degrees, 22 and a half, 31.6, 45, and of course, you, you top out at that 50 degree mark. Now here's the deal. A lot of times people will, you know, and I understand moving quickly, 
wanting to just rely on that positive stop. Me personally, I still like to, even if I'm in that detent, I still like to, to, to tighten down with my, my clamp. You're given that extra assurance that it's, it's where you want it to be and it's not going to move. There's not, it's not going to accidentally pop out of the detent. The other thing is, is that, I don't know, maybe it makes those detents last longer. They're more accurate over a longer length of time. Or maybe not. But I like to clamp down. Hmm. Aha! Nice. We'll tighten it down as far as we can with the Phillips and. These are not Phillips screws. Pretty funny. I might have a better solution. <laughs> I do. I do. This Allen key is not supplied, but it definitely is going to make it easier. If you got the tools, people, use them. Use them. Now, after you run it down, okay, it's not, it's not a big deal to snug up using this Allen key. Now you got your top handle installed. Whoa! There we go. I'm gonna put this Allen key back here for safekeeping for a moment. I'm gonna put this aside back where it was. As far as rails go, I mean, they're pretty smooth. That knob to adjust your bevel is actually here at the back. There's a positive stop at zero, okay. We have a stop at 45 to the right. Let's slide our fence out. If we go the other direction to the left, we have a stop at 45. Okay, if we slide out our positive stop here, you'll see the saw will go all the way to 46. 48 on bevel, but we do indeed have a stop here for 45. Even if you were going to use your, your preset at zero, you're still going to want to tighten your bevel lock. One of the things I, I failed to mention earlier was we do have some material rails that will slide out a number of inches to help support material. I want to see how they line up with the, the deck of the fence. But before we do that, let's slide our saw back. Let's grab our combination square. You see that? I mean, right out of the box. It's pretty doggone close, if not perfect. You seen it? Let's check the other side. It's, it's dead on. It looks dead on. I mean, that looks pretty good. Come to the other side here. Look at that. Wow. You see that? Let's get a piece of molding, see, see, how, see how an outside corner meets up. All right, now that we have the saw plugged in, you'll see we have illumination. I guess you could turn the illumination off up here. Now, it adds light to the workpiece. It's going to cast a shadow instead of using a la having a, a laser for your cut line. These shadow style positioning systems, they don't necessarily do the greatest job of, of sending that cut line down onto your material so you can see where your cut's going to be. At that point, like literally, like look where, where that cut line actually shows up on the material. I mean, I will tell you, felt pretty awesome. And I will tell you something else. It's a pretty doggone nice cut. This is a 40, 40 Tifus's blade for extra fine finish. When we go to match up this molding, if this saw is off, we will see it in, in the detail part at the top. I mean, you'll see, look at that. We're, we're matched right up perfectly. I mean, and that edge is, it's a, it's a nice cut. It's a nice cut. So that saw is like literally onto the break of dawn. Look at that. That is nice. This saw seems pretty doggone on. If we had a variance in our motor scale, 
it would express itself in that miter, okay, as well as in the bevel if that was off. Now, here's the thing. Is the bevel scale on? Let's find out. What we could do to check our bevel scale is let's, let's move the saw to our first stop. Now, here's the deal. Our first stop is literally, it's beyond, it's at 46 degrees, okay? And if we wanted to make a matching cut, let's, let's move over here. But here's the deal. I, I feel like I want to adjust these. I'm gonna unplug the saw. I'm gonna bring, bring this out. That's, that's dead on, no? You wanna lock down our bevel nut. Okay. And we're still on to the break of dawn. This side needs a little adjustment too. Dead on? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Want to confirm? Dead on. Let's see if we could do that again with the saw flipped to the other side. What we need to do to complete our cut on bevel is pull out that right side of the fence. This is really good, okay? Our bevel's on. Now, here's the deal. Our bevel did require some adjustment. Our stops. Our stops required some adjustment. But now they're on. They're really nice. I mean, you can see it's a, it's, it's a perfect cut. And if there was a flaw, the flaw would be expressed here. We would be able to, this would, was where it would be most noticeable, okay? Where the profile becomes detailed. Up against the fence, right? The left of the blade, wow, you're looking at right around like five inches of capacity against the fence. You'll see that the molding will just squeak by the drive motor. You see that? To the right of the blade, you know, it looks like you're comfortably cut, cutting up to three and five eighths. You'll see that out here, like we're, 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 we're contacting that dust chute and all, but nothing else so far is contacting. So nothing's impeding our cut at three and a half inches. Pretty good, look at that. Start moving into larger materials. Like I said earlier, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to flip that material flat. Like this riser, okay? This, will, this material will fit up against the saw flat and you would think to yourself, oh yeah, well, you know, it, I could get it in there to, to make the cut. For demonstration purposes only, let's say we pulled our guard back. Okay, enough to, to, to start the saw and contact the material. Okay, as you can see, not only are we contacting, we're contacting the, the top of the saw on, on the left side. On the right side, you'll see we're hitting, we're hitting in here the drivetrain. So that's the reason why, obviously, you're not gonna be able to cut flat against the fence, even though it could fit in there before you start operating your saw. Material like this, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna move it flat. This is red oak. I mean, it's a nice cut. The saw had no problem moving through the material. I don't think we heard any strain. I did hear, you hear that hum that lasted for a few seconds? Let's try to, let's make another cut here. Oh, 
our deck, even, even our extending, extended supports, it all lines up. It's going to, it's going to make your work easier. And if you're a homeowner or DIYer and you want to make your work easier, then smash the like button because it's free for you to do. It gives you seven years of good luck when smashing the like button. So your homeowner, your DIY projects, it's going to go faster. Also, if you're a professional, let me ask you, would you consider jumping into this skill 10 inch corded 15 amp double bevel compound motor saw? I tell you, it seems pretty doggone good. And it's only $299 right now, which seems to be a pretty good price for everything that you're getting here. Let me know down below. We want to hear what you have to say. Also, is there other materials you'd like to see me cut with this, like crown molding? Do you want me to do a, a tutorial or show you with this saw how I cut crown molding flat? In my opinion, it is the most accurate way to cut crown molding, and that's the reason I invested in a sliding compound motor saw to do those larger, larger pieces of crown molding flat because it makes for a better finished product. Do you want to see, do you want to see me do that with this, with this saw? Also, if you're a homeowner or DIY or you need help with things like changing the blade, or if you want a, a better look at adjusting the bevel or even maybe adjusting the motor scale even though we didn't need it. Leave it down below, we could make that additional video if you all show enough interest. With that, I wanna say I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you all on the next one. Video's over, but I know you want more. So this is how you're gonna get it. First thing you need to do is pretend you're this guy and you're here at the birthplace of freedom. Now ring that bell like it's 1776 and let all notifications throw. What? You're not subscribed yet? Well, smash this button here. After that, watch this video here, here, and maybe over here. See you later.